Hey, I hope you had an amazing 4th of July weekend. I hope you got to celebrate our country with some people that you enjoy and maybe even enjoy some fireworks. I hope the long weekend has given you some rest and I hope you've been traveling well this summer. No, I, I don't just mean the vacations you've taken, but I mean your travels on the road of life because today we're gonna continue the theme that we started six weeks ago with some helpful rules for the road, wisdom from the ancient book of Proverbs to help us live better and arrive safely at our destination. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you're going to find this content really helpful for experiencing the very best that God has prepared for you, what God has designed you for. He's designed you for a great career and great relationships and the best faith relationship with Him. And so today, we're going to talk about living life with purpose. But first, to remind us of our purpose and the God that gives us purpose, let's allow these two songs to focus our thoughts. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting I'll praise when I'm numbered Praise when surrounded Cause praise is the waters That my enemies drown in As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul I'll praise when I don't I'll praise cause I know You're still in control My praise is a weapon It's more than a sound Cause praise is the shout That brings Jericho down As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside?
Well, today's message is entitled Rules for the Road. It's a continuation of what we started to talk about on Memorial Day weekend. So on Memorial Day weekend, I gave you two rules for the road. You can watch that video to catch up. And today we're going to continue with two more rules for the road to help you reach your destination safely. I know we all want to get somewhere in life, and the goal is to take these road rules or rules for the road and apply them to our daily lives. Because like I said last time, life is a highway. And the adventure of life is actually more complicated than a highway because we all come equipped with rear view mirrors. What we don't come equipped with is reverse, right? There's no do-overs. You only get to do each season of life once. You only get to do each day one time. And you look in the rear view mirror and you see how you did the last season and you're like, ah, I would like to go back and do some of that over. And, and then you look down <laughs> and there's only drive. There's no reverse. We just can't go back. So we all have regrets because we all have a rear view mirror, but there's no do overs. This is, uh, this is what we all have in common. Whether you're a person of faith or not a person of faith, we all want to get the future right, right? And we all want to arrive safely at some destination. And hopefully these two new rules will help you get there. So rule number one, or if you've been following along since the beginning, rule number three is choose a destination. Rule number three, I want you to choose when you're traveling to choose a destination. You don't just travel, you choose a destination and you borrow a map. This is kind of a two-part thing. Choose a destination and borrow a map. Here's what I mean by choosing a destination. Everybody ends up somewhere in life. The win, the win, just humanly speaking, and the win in terms of being a Jesus follower, the win is to end up somewhere on purpose. And just as in a long road trip, there are multiple legs. The first day we got this far, the next day we went there, the third day we stayed two days, fourth day. And just as there are multiple legs in a road trip, there are multiple seasons in life, right? It's so important in each season of life to determine your destination in that season. Now, essentially, determine what you want your life to look like in each season or in this season. And here's why. Again, this is so important. Obviously, you don't want to drift. Nobody wants to drift. And if we don't decide, here's the thing, if we don't choose what we want this season to look like or what we want life to look like at the end of a season, if we don't choose circumstances and, and people and life in general, then life just sort of decides for us. Life is a highway. Another day, another day, another day. Look in the rear view mirror. Uh-oh, no reverse. Another day, another day, another day. So why wouldn't we just decide? Because again, life is connected. This season leads to the next. If I don't set the correct destination for this season, I won't be prepared for the next one. This is what wisdom dictates, that I'm thinking about this season, not simply in light of what's right in front of me, right ahead of me, but ultimately what's further down the road, because one season leads to the next, and each season builds on the other, right? And, and this wishing, wishing won't get you there, it goes back to what I call the principle of the path. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, that direction, not intention, Direction, not intention, determines destination. This is true. When you're driving, this is true. When you're living, it's direction, not intention, that determines destination. You can drive north with the intention of going to Key West. You'll never get to Key West. I don't care what your intentions are, right? You can intend, and you can pray, and you can trust God, and you'll still end up in Canada. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Intention, it's almost irrelevant. Intention should lead us quickly to some sense of direction. So in every season of life, and in this season of life, I want you to choose what the destination is. Not, not for your entire life, but for this season. Because the seasons are connected, and because life is a highway. And there's another destination, and there's another destination coming down the road. So decide now. Decide now, so that when you get to the end of the season, you look back on what you need to look back on to ensure that you're ready for the next season. Now, the second part of this is borrow a map. And here's what I mean by that. Somebody has already been to where you're hoping to arrive. I mean, somebody's already been there. They've been on the road. Maybe they've even arrived at that destination for that season of life. They've done it. And they've either done it poorly or they've done it well. But <laughs> somebody's traveled this road before. And here's the thing, and this is kind of insulting, but when you transition into a new season of life, you don't know what you're doing. 
I mean, how could you? You've never done it before. I mean, the ultimate example of this is when we had our first child and we stayed a couple nights in the hospital and then the nurse comes in and says, you can go home today. And we thought, by ourselves? I mean, I don't even know how to change a flat tire and you're sending me home with a baby? Would you come home? Is there anyone here who could come home with us? I mean, do you remember this? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, in other seasons of life, we just think, oh, we'll figure it out. We know what we're doing. But how could we possibly know that every season of life is different? So the wisest thing you could do is to find somebody who's traveled that road, borrow their map. The other way to do this is to find some people who are kind of down the road from you and have accomplished what you hope to accomplish, either professionally or relationally, academically, maybe with regard to parenting or marriage. And, and here's my suggestion. Get their email address and email them and just say, you know what? Hey, we're moving into a, a new season of life. We're moving into a new job, moving into a new city, moving into you know, a new stage of parenting, whatever it might be, and just say, I've got a few questions for you. Here's three questions. Would you meet me for coffee? Uh, I'll buy you coffee if you'll just answer a few questions for me. And essentially what you're saying is, I want your map. Don't say, I want your map. They'll be like, what? <laughs> I mean, this is just your way of saying, tell me what you know. And here's the thing about people who are a season ahead of you in life, and I'm a season ahead of some of you. We don't know how much we know until someone asks, and then we realize we've learned a few lessons along the way. So one of the best things you can do is reach ahead of to the next generation and say, show me your map. Talk to someone who's a little bit further down the road from you and borrow their map. Vern Law was a baseball player who said that experience is a hard teacher because it gives the test first and the lesson afterward. Experience is a hard teacher because, oh no, I failed the test and now I realize what I should have known. So the only way to avoid this is to get ahead and invite information, authors or people into your life in this season. So when the test comes, you'll already have had the lesson and acknowledging what you don't know and inviting someone into that space where you just aren't exactly sure, that's not weakness. Asking for help isn't weakness, it's maturity. It's a sign of wisdom. In Proverbs 19, verse 20, the author puts it this way. Listen to advice and accept discipline that you may be wise. And listen to this proverbial promise. You'll be wise the rest of your days. Here's what that means. You'll be wise in this season and prepare in such a way that you're ready for the next season. You'll be wise for the rest of your days because if the pattern, this is a pattern and a habit, if the pattern and the habit of your life is to be open to the counsel and the wisdom of others, you'll be wise for the rest of your days. So choose the destination and this leg of the journey or in this season and borrow a map. Perhaps you'll get where you're going uh, faster. Maybe you'll get there with less regret. Maybe you'll get there safer. Now, the next rule, rule number four, um, is pay attention to the signs. Rule number four, pay attention to the road signs. Uh, as you go along, there are road signs in life, and they are there for our protection as well as our direction. Many of us, some of us, you, you know, you think those signs are for other people. And that's for what other people need to do. Me, I mean, I don't need to slow down for this curve. I'm a good driver, right? Uh, yellow light, that means speed up so I can get through the intersection. And then... When we see other drivers ignore those signs, what do we think? We think, oh, what a dummy, putting other people's lives at risk. Sometimes it's hard to see the dummy in the mirror, right? And the same is true in life for all of us. Again, the author of Proverbs says in Proverbs 27 that the prudent, the wise, the people who know that life is connected, the prudent see the signs and they respond. The prudent see danger and they take refuge. The prudent see the signs and they respond to the signs wisely. People pay attention to the signs, the signs of what's going on with their friends, and they see what's going on professionally. And I'm not just going to live in la-la land and pretend everything's fine. I'm going to pay attention to the signs. It's always tempting to ignore signs. It is most tempting to ignore signs relationally, but relationships are like a, a combustion engine. Nothing improves with neglect, right? You hear that funny sound, you just ignore it. Things get worse. One of the reasons we ignore the signs in our relationships, honestly, is we don't know what to do when it comes to relationships. We don't know how to fix it. So because we don't know what to do, we're just like, I, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go restart my internet. I'm gonna go do what I know how to do, but relationally, I don't know. So we're tempted to ignore the signs, but nothing 
nothing improves with neglect, especially relationships. So again, you may hate me for saying this, but if more than one person has brought something to your attention that you need to think about or work on, that's a sign. If more than one person, and they, they maybe they don't even know each other, but it's almost like they've been talking to each other, you know, you're the common denominator. It's obvious. It's not obvious to you, but it seems obvious to other people. If more than one person has brought to your attention something that you need to pay attention to, that's a sign. Have you ever heard yourself say this? Okay, don't ever bring that up again. I just want you to take that sign off my road. If you've ever thought, I don't want to hear that anymore. Stop showing me that sign. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Quit showing me the signs. I'm fine. What do you respond to in that way? You're ignoring the signs. You keep ignoring the signs and you're taking the wrong way. You're going down the wrong road. You may never arrive because the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple say, I'm fine. I know everything I need to know. You're wrong. The simple, the people, they don't understand that life is connected, that today leads to tomorrow, that today is going to show up in my future. The simple keep going and they pay the penalty. So pay attention, pay attention to the signs. So those are two more rules for the road. Choose a destination, borrow somebody's map, pay attention to the signs. Kind of three, but two rules there. You're going to end up somewhere in this season. You're going to end up somewhere in life. I want you to end up somewhere in this season of life on purpose. I want you to live with purpose and you get to choose. So follow the rules of the road and perhaps you'll reach your destination on time and on purpose purpose. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and all of that. But mostly, we can't wait to see you in person next Sunday at Liberty Pines Academy. We've got great environments for the whole family, and we cannot wait to meet you. See you on July 14th.